Welcome to PowerCat Live. I'm here with my fellow PowerCat, Manuela Pichler. Manuela, tell us, what do you do on PowerCat? I'm a program manager on the CAT team and I work with um, some of our marquee customers on helping them accelerate their power platform adoption. Um, I'm based in the UK, so I work with um, some of our European customers. And how did you get this role? Where did you come from before you joined PowerCat? I was actually a customer myself before that. I worked for Virgin Atlantic, where I led a quick win development team that developed solutions internally. Um, and through that, kind of got exposure to the Power Platform and started working with the CAT team as a customer before um, an opportunity came up to join the team. And so today, you're going to show us a new capability of the Center of, Ex Center of Excellence Starter Kit. Is it fair to say that you were the heart and soul behind the Center of Excellence Starter Kit? Um, I guess it's a it's a team effort. Um, so parts of it are developed when I was still a customer, and then I kind of inspired and took that forward when I joined um, when I joined the team. But overall, multiple people in the team develop uh, and sit in the background of the series starter kit. Nice. So tell us a little bit about the innovation backlog. Like, how did it come to be? And we'll see it here in a second. But tell us tell us its origin story. Um, it's actually quite a, I think it's actually quite a funny story. We were in a, in a meeting with Charles Lamano reviewing um, some of our upskill initiatives. And one of the things that he said is that, um, how does an organization discover the apps that need building? Um, how do they kind of work through a, the, the backlog of ideas of people who might not have had exposure to the power platform before? And um, in typical series starter kit style, we took that quote and, and turned it into an app. And so what does the innovation backlog do? So it's a place for collecting these ideas? Um, yeah, it's a place for um, collecting ideas, describing pain points, describing kind of how the process works currently to give a developer who's picking up that idea the best um, background um, when, they, um, when they pick that idea for development. So it helps with the measures, um, describing the business value, describing the tools. And once the development is done, the solution is also described so you can then compare um, the estimated ROI with the real um, the real ROI um, that you have. It's nice that it has those hard measurements because those are often really, really hard to get. So how did customers help shape what became the innovation backlog? Yeah, so before we even started developing, we um, worked on some wireframes and um, some presentations just to really early on engage customers to get their input. We definitely didn't want to invest time in building something that then wouldn't end up being used. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we worked on some wireframes in um, Paint and Word um, and initially shared them with customers to really kind of talk them through, you know, this is where we think um, you should, you know, measure your success values. This is how we would define those measures. Is that something that would work for you? Is it too much information, too little information? What exactly do you need for those um, um, value measurements, what do you do currently for some other maybe software processes, etc. Um, so yeah, that's how we kind of worked through it um, from like the very, very early on before we even, um, before we even opened Power Apps and started developing. So you're saying Microsoft designed this apps in paint and word. Is that what I got out of it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At least this, this one, this one area of Microsoft. This one. <laughs> Well, yes, many of the tours in the series start, I can start, um, start in word actually. <laughs> I respect that. So, so let's say I have a brilliant idea that I want to get logged in the innovation backlog. Can you show me what that's like? Yes, of course. Yeah. All right. So this is the starting point of the innovation backlog. You see a list of ideas that have already been logged, and why don't we just go through one that's already been been submitted? Um, so quite a common, um, I guess, area that many people will be familiar with is a painful um, invoice processing where you. Yeah, right. um, open um, Excel spreadsheets, you enter them into Outlook or third party systems. So here is um, an idea that's been submitted by, by Adele. Um, so initially she just described um, the name and the description of the, of the process and also highlighted uh, some of the pain points that she's experiencing with this process. So it's time consuming manual work and it's quite um, error prone transferring that data. Um, she then described the teams that are um, involved in this process. It's the suppliers, the invoice team members, and managers that um, approve um, certain processes. I like that. That's actually some a little bit of business analysis that often comes too, too late in the process, right, is identifying the stakeholders and kind of the roles that come out of that. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's, um, it's really important to look after, uh, to identify the people that are involved, because only through that can the um, the app or the solution that's being built and be 
be used by those people. So you need to really think about um, are those people in front of a desk? Are they always kind of on their feet um, using a mobile device? Mm. Um, are they ever going to be in areas where offline support is, for example, needed? So those are exactly the details that are needed to help a developer design a, a solution that is impactful. Yeah, it makes sense. That's good. Um, and then on the next screen, Adele enters the tools that are currently used in her process. And that, um, again, gives the developer picking up that solution or picking up that idea for development, a good idea of what's currently involved. Are there any um, third party or external systems that might not have an API available? Mm. Or is it common tools where we know there's already a connector um, available in the um, in the power platform like Excel and, and Office 365? And um, here we obviously kind of populate um, everything that's available um, as a connector. And we've got some non-software tools available as well, such as um, herding cats or a meeting. Um, and as, a, as an organization, you can add your own tools um, here as well if you use something something that we don't, don't recognize at the moment. That's great. Um, so on this screen, Adele spends a, a couple of minutes really describing the measures that describe her, her pain points. Um, and that is really helpful for, um, uh, for measuring and estimating that ROI. Um, so she estimates um, which team is spending how many minutes, how many hours per day or per week um, completing the process. And she also can um, estimate some um, like how many errors that the team produces per month, for example, in, in making that process really difficult and, and, and challenging for her. I think that list of measures along the left too, that alone is pretty valuable, just giving a way of people to kind of model, like how do I think of these savings? Um, because yes, often exactly, they know them, yeah. but they haven't ever measured them before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then on the workflow step, this one is, is optional, but again, gives the developer a good idea of what's currently involved. Um, Adele describes the process um, that she's currently going through. So she opens the um, invoice in Outlook and then puts it into, into PDF. Um, the process can be provided in either VCO, for example, if that exists, or through a recording and process advisor, which is a new part of Power Automate as well. Um, so it's quite, quite flexible in how you provide the description. Um, but yeah, the, the more information, obviously, you provide, the better it is for a developer to pick up from. And then on the last screen, we estimate the complexity of the um, of the solution, and uh, much of this is pre-populated based on the the things that Adele um, filled out on the previous screens. But um, some of it she can toggle on and off, for example, offline support if that is required, um, and that again helps a developer make a decision um, on on picking up that solution. So by going through the earlier screens, you actually get like a first level complexity assessment. That's pretty useful. Yes. Yes, so the, the tools that are picked, the, um, the people that are um, impacted, um, kind of some of, the, some of the tasks that are explained will provide that complexity analysis for us. Um, but then, yeah, so, um, some things will, like how often the solution will be used is, is not something that we can um, estimate, I guess. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to use this their own organization, how do they get it? So the innovation uh, backlog is part of the CV starter kit and can be downloaded with the um, with all of the other CV starter kit components. Um, it doesn't have a dependency on, on anything else in the in the kit, so it can be used standalone. So I can use just this. Now, what about licensing? Do I need to worry about licensing if I'm going to use this? Um, so the innovation backlog can be deployed in, in production environments. It's based on Dataverse. Um, so if, if you deploy it in a production environment, it would require a premium license, but it's also compatible with Dataverse for Teams. So you could deploy it in a Dataverse for Teams environment and use the seeded license to submit ideas. That's great. And if people have feedback as they're using this, can they provide that back in? You mentioned how customer driven it was. Um, yes, absolutely. So we have um, the series starter kit is available on GitHub and the um, issues tab in GitHub can be used to raise both um, um, issues you're experiencing as well as feedback or um, change requests. So we, we definitely, um, everything that we develop is developed for our customers. Um, and so definitely we want to hear how you're using it, uh, what value you're getting from it and what else you would like to see. Manuela, this looks like a great capability for customers to use. And the fact that it can be deployed uh, if, with anyone that has Power Platform and free to Dataverse for Teams is a great reason to, to go start exploring it. Thanks for the time today. It was good talking with you. Thanks for having me.